Are you sick and tired of your child telling silly lies, things that are even so obvious that they're not true? Um, or maybe your child has even gotten a little bit more sophisticated with their lying and you're just fed up and you want them to open up to you and just let you know what's really going on. If this is your situation, you're going to love this video because we are going to dive into how to get your child to stop lying and really looking at the reasons behind why they're lying in the first place. So if you've been following this how-to series, you know that we have been really focusing on the why behind some of the challenging behaviors that your kids throw your way. If we understand the why, behind what's going on, it becomes a lot easier to know how to address those problems. The reasons behind the behavior drive the way that you address it. If you have the wrong why, you are not going to be able to fully eradicate this negative behavior or allow them to know what behaviors you really want them to pursue and how to replace that negative behavior with a positive one. So that's why we're focusing so much on that in this how-to series. If you have not caught the other videos, you have to check them out. We've got topics on focus and eating, listening, you gotta check it out. So, and if you are new to this series, you don't know who I am, my name is Jillian. I'm a licensed clinical professional counselor and Fly on the Wall Counseling is my online counseling and coaching business where I work with parents of strong-willed kiddos who tend to not listen, who tend to be really stubborn and want things their way, who have a hard time listening, paying attention, doing what they're supposed to. And what I do is I work with parents and equip them with very straightforward, effective strategies and a customized plan that perfectly addresses their child's challenging behaviors and personality, as well as the family's important values. So that's a little bit about flying the wall counseling, but let's dive into this idea of lying. And of course, we're going to start with the why. So why is it that kids constantly lie? Well, let's back up a little bit and start to look at when does this actually start to surface? And this is something where maybe if your child doesn't fit this, boop, red flag, and you may want to look at what might be going on with your child um, because they don't fit into this. So children tend to start to lie around age four or five. Now, these lies don't tend to be super sophisticated at this point. You can probably tell when your child is lying when they're this young, but this is when it starts to service. So if your child has started lying before that, or if they seem to be very manipulative or very um, intricate with their lies in these early ages, this might be something that you wanna ask some questions about to a professional. Please know that you can always reach out to me. Head on over to flyinthewallcounseling.com. My contact info is below as well. Four or five is when this starts to happen. And why do they start to do this? Well, lying sometimes is just easy. Sometimes it's just the easy way to address something. Lying also tends to happen when something is on the line. So that means they're gonna get in trouble, they're going to lose something. There's some sort of pressure that's going on to get them to lie, typically. We have some kids that do develop a love for lying, love to make it into a game. Um, and this is something where it's a more complex situation. And um, of course, if you have those concerns, you can ask some questions below as well. But for the most part, children lie because there's something on the line for them. They are feeling pressure. And I don't know about you, but when I perform under pressure or I feel like I'm going to let someone down or I feel like I'm gonna lose out on something, 
I get a little nervous, right? That's the normal human reaction. We get a little bit nervous when we are under pressure. When a child is under pressure to tell the truth, they get nervous. Their logical part of their brain shuts down. And all of a sudden, the emotional part of their brain, all the survival mode stuff comes out and they're not able to think clearly. So maybe you've told them 101 times, if you just tell me the truth, it's going to be better. I just want you to tell me the truth. I Because then your consequence isn't going to be as bad. If you lie, then you get a consequence for the bad behavior and for lying, right? But kids are not able to really process that in that moment. And if they are, even if it somehow ekes into their psyche, it's really hard for them to believe in that moment that they can take that risk, that maybe they can just get away with it. Maybe the self-preserving technique is going to work. And so that's what they're going to go with. So it's not always, you know, they're just trying to make your life miserable. It's not that they don't love you or that they're being vindictive and lying to make you feel bad. This isn't necessarily something that is personal. Lying is often just a self-preserving technique that they are utilizing because they're not thinking clearly. So don't take it so personally. And if you're not taking it so personally, your reaction to them when they lie is going to be starkly different. If you don't take it personal, you're less likely to have more of a harsh response. You're less locally, likely to have a lot of emotion evoked in the first place. So try not to take it personal and really look at why is this so hard for my child to tell the truth in this moment? Now, another reason why a child might lie is because they don't actually think that they're lying. Many times we assume that whatever they say is a lie, but it could be that that's just what they know or that's just what they saw. A lot of times parents come to me and say, well, you know, I ask them what happened and they say, I don't know. And I know they know, but do you know that they know? Can you really be inside their brain? Do you really know how they experienced something? It could really be that they don't know, that they were in an emotional state when something was going on, and so they don't really remember, or they don't know the reason behind why they chose to do something, because they weren't being logical in that moment. So it may not be that they're lying at all. It may just be that they, truly don't remember or what they got from that situation was really different than what you got from that situation or or somebody else, right? Eyewitness testimony is not always accurate. It's not always the best predictor of what actually happened. Usually there's what one person thinks, what another person thinks, and then there is the truth. And so definitely take a look at that. See if there's ways for them to have actually been telling the truth, even though it doesn't seem like it. Um, and by the way, extra hint here, if you straight out call them a liar or say, why are you lying to me? They're going to shut down and they're not going to want to continue the conversation. So just definitely something to keep in mind. I've also seen a lot of instances where kids just don't have the proper vocabulary to really explain what was going on. Or maybe they think they're describing it appropriately and they're really not. So depending on the age of your child, this may certainly be something that contributes. And if it comes to the fact that you have teenagers and their friends are on the line, then you better believe that this is going to be something they really struggle with. Once a child becomes a tween and 
or is a teen, their friends are so important to them. And so, you know, the idea of being a social outcast or being ostracized by their friends or having awkwardness between them and their friends, that is going to rank very highly for them. And so risking damaging their relationship with mom and dad is going to be a no-brainer because they know that you're going to love them no matter what. They know that you're going to accept them no matter what. And their friends, that's just not the case. And so it may feel more safe for them to lie about something and protect their friends than to tell you the truth about what's going on because they're so afraid of losing that social connection and that's just such a primary need for them. So definitely keep that in mind. And maybe you need to problem solve some ways where you can get your child to share with you and assure them that their social status is not going to be compromised. Um, or that you know it really is to their benefit to actually share what was going on with you. So just know that if their social life is on the line, you're going to likely get some major pushback. So what about partial truths? What about when they kind of tell what's true, but not really, or they do tell the truth technically, but they left a lot of information out. So this is really, really common. And usually our response is, well, if you didn't tell me the whole truth, you were lying to me, or you left this out, so really you weren't being fully honest. And you know, that's true. And if we're honest with ourselves, we used to do that all the time. And maybe we still do do that all the time, just depending on whether or not we think it's in our best interest. That's what they're doing too. And so, you know, maybe you as an adult and you having a higher level of reasoning and knowing that you need to protect your family or whatever your justification may be, you may think, well, yeah, but the reason I did it makes sense and is justified. Well, to them, it makes sense and is justified as well. So just know that the same techniques that you use on a regular basis to justify why you tell partial truths is the same that your child is using to tell partial truths as well. It's just that they're using them against you and that hurts and you feel like your relationship is being violated and you can't trust them. And that of course can lead to so many different struggles, especially when kiddos get older and you feel like you have to take away rights from them and take away their freedom, which goodness, freedom is such a big value to so many kids. So this is something that we just need to be realistic about. You know, why are they telling a partial truth? And if our immediate reaction to them for telling some of the truth is nagging and lecturing and them getting in trouble, why do they want to tell the truth ever? If we are associating negative ramifications, negative experience with telling the truth, well, we're not really setting our kids up to want to tell the truth very often because telling the truth is accompanied with something that's negative. So instead of beating them up for not sharing the whole truth, what if we shifted that and actually told them we appreciate getting some of the information and you know you you understand that it's really hard to share the truth and it's scary sometimes to share the truth and you just really hope that you know maybe in a few minutes they'd feel ready to share a little more with you. That would be a pretty different experience for them, wouldn't it? Instead of getting a lecture, instead of being told that they are liars or lying, by the way, when you say you're lying or you're not telling the truth, what your child hears is you are a liar. Whether you say it or not, whether you're implying it or not or thinking it or not, that's what they're 
thinking. And that is a really quick way to get a child to shut down. So instead of going into all those negative experiences, what if we were to shift it and give a positive experience instead, right? And, you know, maybe you tell kids like, oh, I just, I want you to tell me the truth. I'm not going to be mad. But do you get mad? Do you? Are you able to regulate your emotions in that moment? It's really hard to. And even if you don't say something, it's likely that your body language or your facial expressions are going to communicate something to your child that you are angry and you're not happy about it. And so maybe we just need to get rid of that phrase altogether, you know, that I won't be mad because if you can't stick to it, then you're lying, <laughs> right? It's something where they don't trust you to be able to tell you what's true. And we get in this crazy cycle of them not wanting to tell you. So maybe we just need to eliminate that altogether if it's something that you can't stick to. Or maybe we just need to change the way that we respond when we hear truth. Now, when they tell you the truth and it is something that's horrifying or disappointing or upsetting or anger evoking. I'm not saying that you can't ever address it and let them know that that was not okay or, you know, that they shouldn't have consequences for that. They absolutely should have consequences for things that they're doing that are not good for them. Parents are in a child's life to direct them, to correct them, to make sure that they are not just doing whatever feels good, um, but are doing things that are in line with your family's values, what you want them to become. And so what I am saying is if they tell you the truth and it is something upsetting, can we get to that part in a few minutes? You know, that took a lot of effort for your child to tell you the truth. And that's something that's praiseworthy. Or they're maybe not proud of what they did, or if they are proud of what they did, you know, that's something to discuss too. You know, get some more information. Find out what was going on inside their heart. How are they feeling after it happened? Those are really important things, and those are things that are going to build your relationship with your child. It delays the lecture that they don't want to hear, it allows you to have a positive connection with them right after they told you the truth so that they're more likely to do it in the future. And once you've had a great conversation with them, you can get to the consequence part. You can get to the life lesson part, but you don't have to jump there right away. And honestly, if you want them that, to have that lecture and life lesson sink in, you need to meaningfully connect with them. Otherwise, they're way less likely to hear what you have to say, and neither of you are going to feel good about what just happened. Kids need to know that positive things come from telling the truth, come from being honest. And you may be thinking, well, yeah, something really positive co does come from that. I trust them. My trust is very valuable. And I agree. Your trust means the world to your child but they don't really reflect on that or, or fully grasp the reality of that until they ask to do something later on and you say no because I don't trust you because you didn't tell me the truth. And then it tends to turn into some kind of an emotional escalation and nobody is happy. So I encourage you, don't use the... I'll trust you thing as the motivator. It's just too hard for them to grasp. Um, it's not an immediate gratification. It's not an immediate way to let them know that telling the truth is actually helpful. They need that immediate feedback. So definitely try to come up with something where you can give them that feedback in that moment so that they associate telling the truth with something positive. Okay, so what if your child is a chronic liar? If they are telling lies 
all the time over and over and over again and it doesn't matter what you say or what you do and it's to the point where it's kind of ridiculous and you don't even understand why they're going out of their way to make all of these lies so if your child has gotten to that point it could be that lying has somehow become a coping skill for them now it's a negative coping skill and of course we would rather them choose something that's going to be beneficial to everyone including them because certainly lying has some pretty negative ramifications but if they're doing it all the time and it's a habit then it may be something that is a coping skill and if it's a habit it's giving them something that they desire it's working for them somehow now it may not be working in the sense that you know they're certainly not improving your relationship with them they're certainly not becoming a trustworthy person and they're getting in trouble a lot but at some level the lying is working for them is it helping them escape having to admit some things about themselves is it keeping other people at a distance because they just want to be left alone what is it that could be the positive benefit from lying for them and that they're now using it as a way to cope and to deal with things that are hard now this is more of an extreme case and so if your child has gotten to this point I just want to say it's very important to start to seek some support and some help for them um, it is very important for them to be able to learn some very positive coping skills so that when they're out and about on their own they're going to be able to thrive in society and create meaningful relationships if lies are their go-to coping skill it certainly will cause some issues for them in the future especially when it comes to relationships so definitely seek some help out if that is the case and last but not least if you want your child to stop lying you have to be super conscious about whether or not you in fact are lying you may think oh it's a little white lie or, or it doesn't matter you know I somebody called on the phone and I said that we were going somewhere and we're really not going somewhere I just didn't have time to talk or you know, I, I told the kids that we would be able to do this and then I was really tired and so I said that, you know, we couldn't do it and because I have a headache or something. But really you didn't have a headache, you just didn't want to go. Make sure that you're being honest as much as possible if this is something that you are really trying to address with your kids. So they are often not able to see the difference between an excusable lie and a non-excusable lie their thinking is probably really really concrete black and white when it comes to this stuff especially depending on their age and level of maturity and when it comes to them wanting to get away with something they're going to glean onto anything that you do that can make them feel more justified whether you think it justifies them or not it doesn't matter they're going to use it they're going to spit it back at you and in that moment you are not going to appreciate that decision that you made and they are going to be frustrated and not understand so do the best that you can I know that this can be hard and may be something that you don't even realize that you do here and there. So definitely do some self-reflection and if you do catch yourself in a white lie or lying about something, this is a great opportunity to fess up, to apologize, and to show your child that the awkwardness that comes with admitting something and actually telling the truth and coming clean is something that adults do is something that people in your family do maybe people that they know don't do it but that's something that you do and that you want your family to be known for i hope this is helpful if you appreciated this video be sure to give it a thumbs up Feel free to share it along with any other parents who may be struggling with this and their kiddos. Be sure to subscribe to my channel 
And also check out the other how-to videos in this series. And just to let you know, next week there'll be a video on how do I get my child to stop screaming. See you then.